Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. As always today we're gonna take a quick look at the markets and then go through a few articles that caught my attention. As always let's start by refreshing this. And of course before I forget if you like these kinds of videos, these daily news updates, make sure to subscribe. I do put these out pretty much every day. I think I've taken one day off in the last month. So you get them consistently from me. <laughs> anyway taking a look at the market here. We are seeing yet another day where not a whole lot is moving, but as compared to yesterday, today it is going up the tiniest bit, with most major tokens up about 1 or 2%. The only exception here, Litecoin ever so slightly down, minus 0.13%, and Tron doing very, very well, up 10%. Tron was already up a similar amount yesterday and this is pretty much a whole week of growth for the token amid some good news coming out that we're going to talk about in a moment as well. Aside from that pretty much everything 1 or 2%. These lower tokens some of them are moving a tiny bit more 3 or 4% but mostly here Maker also up a lot. I, I'm not entirely sure why Maker is going up so much. Don't have an article prepared for that. You're going to have to look that up yourself. Might just be someone pumping it. Might be good news. Um, I do not know right now. But in general, markets more or less going sideways, tiny bit up. Market cap is at 219 billion after a couple days where it was hovering around 217. So that is also up about 1% and Bitcoin dominance at 52.2% at about the same level it has been for a while now. So in general, just not that much to see here. Um, Bitcoin trading volume is up the tiniest bit again. Um, a lot of people are saying we need to see it above 4 billion for a bull market to happen. Um, it has been clawing its way up a tiny bit. It was way closer to 3 billion just a day or two ago, but not anywhere near 4 billion again yet. But let's look at an opinion about the markets. All these articles, of course, linked in the description as always. Um, I'm not going to read every article entirely. So if there's anyone here that uh, catches your attention that you want to read fully, make sure to click through in the description. Anyway, let's read this analysis opinion um, because it's very in-depth and I think, it, I think it makes some good points that a lot of us um, tend to forget easily, especially when we're just seeing the day-to-day -day movements where not a lot is happening. So let us read this together. <coughs> Bitcoin price continues to move sideways and there isn't much volume coming into cryptocurrency. There are some catalysts that could potentially kickstart another bull run. However, uncertainty is an important characteristic of any market. It becomes quite hard to predict the best time frame to put some fresh cash into cryptocurrency. My non-professional advice, don't try to time the market perfectly. Sure, there's an underlying risk which is Bitcoin's price dropping even lower to around $4,500 levels. Nonetheless, history also shows us what usually happens during the last quarter of the year, and that is a nice pump in price. Not only in the cryptocurrency market, but on traditional assets, commodities and fiat currency markets. As we can see, there have been some minor gains on some cryptocurrencies such as Tron and IOTA. Nonetheless, the general view is a bit depressing. While the broader trends in the segment are still clearly bearish and odds still favor a larger negative momentum move in the coming weeks, the current quiet market conditions are encouraging, at least from a short term standpoint. The Bitcoin Volatility Index, which tracks the cryptocurrency's price variations over time using the standard deviation of daily open prices, has declined in the past 30 days, proving the trend in volatility has been steadily declining for much of 2018. Um, if you've been watching my videos the last couple of weeks, we've pretty much been talking about this about once a week because we keep getting new data and it shows volatility just continues to go down progressively. And when we see very little volatility, that is usually when a large move up or down is about to happen. Back to the article. Da, 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 da. Interestingly enough, this trend is somehow attributed to the rise of futures trading contrary to popular belief. The introduction of Bitcoin futures last December has been accompanied by a decline in large price swings for the digital asset. As historical prices show, when volatility is low it usually means there's an entry point as prices are moving sideways. High volatility is commonly associated to, with both bull and bear runs. Following the reports from Hacked, Bitcoin could provide a strong bullish signal in the coming period should the triangle consolidation pattern in the most valuable coin get broken on the upside. But for now Bitcoin is still stuck in this formation. 
The $6,500 price level is in the center of attention yet again, as the coin recovered above without testing the support zone near $6,275. Bitcoin's value reached a high of $6,648 on Bitfinex, having gained 1.3% from the previous session. The leading digital cryptocurrency fluctuated within a $155 range on first day. To better understand price swings and the drivers behind adoption, we should take a quick look at the recent past and try extrapolating what could have been the main catalysts for such increases as we've seen throughout December 2017. Interestingly enough, as we'll see below, my conclusions are not that surprising. After all, there aren't that many factors which can promote 100-fold gains. And this is where we get to the general stuff that is important to keep in mind that is easily forgotten when we're just looking at the um, at the situation for a couple days. This is what we see when we look at long term and at the trends in the business. The first concept to understand is that prices can only grow in proportion to volume. This is the more volume we see, the higher the chances of achieving record highs. And this is one of the reasons uh, some of us are so excited about XRapid being used, which is Ripple's technology that uses the XRP token for liquidity, because that means the, um, the volume for the XRP token will go up significantly, because for every international transfer, you need to buy XRP in one country and then sell XRP in another country instantly. So a, a ton of money will move through that, and uh, that usually results in higher prices. Anyway, back to the article. Secondly, High volumes are typically associated with institutional investors and smart money in general. Because there are price barriers created by bots and short sellers, there is an underlying need to see huge quantities of fresh cash pouring into Bitcoin so that those barriers are broken. For instance, when a bull moment is about to happen, we see a bunch of short sellers getting wrecked in epic short squeezes. Right, the key point here is then to try finding causes for smart money to come into the market. Before we dive into those, I would like to spot out that there seems to be a biological factor behind adoption, meaning we could try to compare Bitcoin's macro price trend with bacterial growth. The three paces, uh, phrases of bacterial growth repeatedly sequenced together mimics the Bitcoin trend. And there we see this beautiful graph that shows the long-term growth over years and years of uh, Bitcoin's value. And of course a prediction where people think it will continue going. There's a lag phase during which the bacteria are acclimatizing and acclimatizing. Oh my God, that is not a word I'm used to reading. I know what it means, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Yep, that happens when you speak English as a second language. Um, conditions in a petri dish, an exponential phase where the bacteria are growing through rapid exponential multiplication and a phase of stagnation where the bacteria exhaust the resources in the petri dish and cannot grow any further. Left in that state, the fourth phase of retardation would then ensue. However, if more resources are provided, say by way of a larger petri dish, the process continues. The parallel to the Bitcoin super trend is easy to imagine. The more money goes into Bitcoin, the more the price grows, hence the impact a few million dollars can have in the overall market cap. The above reasoning, although interesting from a scientific perspective, does not answer the question posed. What could be the drivers for a bullish market? The first and most obvious one I might add is regulation followed by traditional markets growth expectations and finally the usual hype cycles promoted by media channels. Uh, you, will, you will find me complaining a lot about those hype cycles because um, I think one big issue we have with the crypto community, at least on YouTube, is that so many people are just here to hype coins. There's, um, there are so many channels that are essentially telling you, you will be rich in a couple days. And they've been saying that about the same tokens for months now, every day. And that, um, that creates so much backlash, so much bad expectations, so much bad practices in the uh, crypto world. And I try very hard not to oversell anything, not to make any promises and, uh, and to, to stay conservative and even-minded even and fair with my assessments on this channel. I hope I succeed. Some, some people are mad at me for not, um, for not outright saying, I think this coin will be worth a hundred times what it's worth right now in two months. But that is just, that is just not how I roll. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's continue here. Uh, the, U the US Securities and Exchange Commission is asking for more comments surrounding a rule change that would deliver the first Bitcoin ETF to the market. The Wall Street watchdog filed several amendments today inviting comments either in support or opposition of several crypto trading products, which the agency rejected in August to the dismay of the crypto community particularly since some ETFs were targeting Bitcoin futures and not the underlying asset. 
This, of course, I talked about yesterday and the day before. Uh, they are reviewing that at the end of this month and the beginning of next month. And then we should have some concrete news that might send the markets flying if they are as positive as some people hope they would be. As it was reported by Hacked, on the heels of that rejection and several others, including the regulator's disapproval of the Winkelvoss Bitcoin ETF, the SEC decided to stay its orders in favor of a commission review. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce, who supports the Bitcoin ETF, previously explained that the SEC Commission would review the staff orders, which is the process that is currently unfolding. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce has criticized the agency recently for denying past Bitcoin ETF applications due to concerns over the underlying Bitcoin spot markets rather than problems with the ETF products themselves. She says that this represents an expansion on the SEC's authority beyond its lawful mandate. However, given the Commission's recent rulings, Pierce is in the minority on this point. We shouldn't expect the SEC to treat cryptocurrencies as conventional financial instruments more accessible to retail investors. And we're moving on to the second reason here, traditional markets. Maybe timing couldn't be better for cryptocurrency investors as due to a possible bubble burst in traditional markets, we could finally see a hefty sum of money shifting towards crypto-based assets. Now remember, this is also something I have been saying for a while now, if and when we face the next financial crisis, and those are usually cyclical, the next one is coming, the question is just when, and a lot of people are saying we are overdue and it should happen any moment now. We have seen a microcosm of what will happen in individual countries that faced economic collapse and hyperinflation. We have seen the Bitcoin price and other cryptocurrency prices jump to three, four, five times their international value within those countries within a day or two, just because so many people were flowing towards it. Then the question is, if we get a global financial crisis again, what will that mean for crypto? And from what we've seen happen in individual countries, that might mean prices just exploding to five or 10 times their value just essentially overnight. Anyway, let's see what this article actually has to say about it, because I'm edit editorializing again. At the moment of writing, the broader S&P 500 index declined, sits at 2901, while the Nasdaq Composite Index sold off 1.8% to close at 7879. Um, if you don't know what those indexes are, an index like that is essentially um, all the major stocks taken together. Um, for instance, the S&P 500 index is 500 large companies. I believe it's the 500 biggest in the, um, in the stock market, but I'm not completely sure if it might be selected differently. But these are generally used to gauge, um, to, um, to gauge the general market health. While most sectors finished lower, information technology and the newly formed communication services were the biggest decliners. The CBOE Volatility Index, aka the VIX, surged as much as 32% on Thursday to its highest since early July. It would later settle at 14.22 for a gain of 22.5%. VIX typically rises when the S&P 500 index falls. Regarding bonds, the yields on the benchmark 10-year US Treasury note peaked at 3.202% on Thursday, the highest since 2011. Short-term government bond yields also rose, with the two-year yield reaching its highest in a decade. Please remember that yields and bond prices move in inverse fashion. What really piques my interest is the current trade talks between China and the US President Trump. Um, Ah, and the US president, Trump moved ahead with a new round of tariffs targeting $200 billion of Chinese goods. A full-on scale trade war between the two most powerful economic powers would surely weaken most markets. The problem being the price of goods would rise both in US dollars and Chinese um, um, yen are actually Japanese. I believe Chinese are yuan. I don't know how to pronounce that, but they're also spelled differently. So I'm pretty sure that is what he meant now, the Chinese currency. Hype cycles, the last um, cause for prices mentioned here. With the low volumes Bitcoin is experiencing, I'm obviously discounting fake volume as it appears to be constant so far, is not surprisingly a few good news here and there can indeed spice things up. Especially when there are coordinated actions between institutional investors and news sources like CNBC, Bloomberg and the likes. Whenever you see a world of amazing news being shared by traditional agencies, you should definitely pay attention to the charts. What you'll notice is hordes of dumb money flowing into the market. That's when you know things are about to heat up. For how long will we have to endure this terrible bearish cycle until the big money decides to move? 
Just wait patiently and take this opportunity to average your losses. When the time comes to be prepared, start moving some of your funds to exchanges as it's important not to miss the best days of trading. And I think that is a very good message to have here. In general, I think what a lot of us, me included, definitely me included, need to learn is to have patience here. These markets can be drawn out. They can take longer than we want them to. And sometimes that means months, months and months of seeing no promising movement and of the value of your assets just slipping and slipping more and more. But you have to keep in mind, if you're in this for the right reasons, if you're in the crypto markets because you understand the technological revolution that they could unfold. If you have invested in projects that you believe in, that you know are valid, that have a good team and a lot of funding and a lot of, um, a lot of collaborations with large companies and banks, then you know, you know that you are invested in something valid and that the value will come. The question is just when, and you just have to be patient for that. And, um, I'm, I'm very patient, or at least I'm trying to be, and I hope more of us can be. Um, it's very, I'm not gonna, trying to give anyone um, shit for being, um, for being easily discouraged or for being scared or for just wanting to get out of the markets. But I really think if you just try to have more patience, if you wait it out and don't sell the moment you have minor profits or the moment you break even, that will be good for everyone, including you including you, but also for the markets in general. Anyway, I, it's already 16 minutes into this video and I've just finished the first article. Don't worry, the other ones are all shorter, but let's continue on right now. The World Trade Organization, of course, a massive force in international markets with all major governments involved, has released a report and they mentioned XRP in particular, but also some other cryptocurrencies. So let's read this article from CoinGabe about it. While the regulatory hurdles will take some time to clear the way for cryptocurrencies, many global organizations have been found positively commenting on cryptocurrencies and their impact. The latest entrant to this list is the World Trade Organization, which has lauded XRP and has also highlighted Bitcoin, Ethereum and IOTA, believing that these would impact the future of world trade. The World Trade Organization is all pleased with the work that Ripple and XRP are doing in the field of cross-border payments and believes it could have a dramatic and disruptive impact on the world's financial system. According to the recent report released by the, uh, released by the World Trade Organization, which is called The Future of World Trade, How Digital Technologies Are Transforming Global Commerce, they state, Blockchain has the potential to profoundly transform the way we trade, who trades and what is traded. It continues to say that blockchain is helping smaller businesses to start trading by supporting them in building trust with partners around the world. The report separately mentions Ripple as a company that could radically transform how financial institutions move money and how it would be beneficial for foreign trade, according to the report. Ripple has ambitions to circumvent the correspondent banking model through its distributed ledger platform. It gives banks the ability to convert funds directly into different currencies in a matter of seconds and at little to no cost without relying on correspondent banks. The company has licenses with more than 100 banks and financial institutions, but it seems that only a limited number of large operations have taken place to date. Banks are still testing the system. You have to, of course, keep in mind that um, Ripple's actual products are fresh on the market and they've just started rolling out their flagship XRapid a couple days ago. So it would, of course, not be fully adopted yet. But this is the World Trade Organization. You have to keep in mind how big the World Trade Organization is. They, they have a direct impact on policy in all major world economic markets. So them releasing a report that is positive about Ripple and XRP and their potential impact is big. But they also mention other coins. So let's continue reading here. Apart from Ripple, the World Trade Organization is also impressed with Bitcoin, Ethereum and IOTA and have mentioned them in the report. For IOTA, the report states, Blockchain is the most well-known distributed ledger technology. But an increasing number of other models are being developed that, like blockchain, are distributed and use various cryptographic techniques, but that are moving away from the concept of blocks or even from both the concepts of blocks and chains. One example of this is IOTA a cryptocurrency designed for machine-to-machine -machine communication in which each transaction is linked to two previous transactions as part of the validation process to form a tangle rather than a chain. 
Today, the term blockchain is commonly used to refer more generally to distributed ledger technology and to the phenomenon surrounding it. So here, they are pointing out that IOTA is innovating on the technology and pointing this out as a promising new development. And continuing about Bitcoin and Ethereum. For Bitcoin and Ethereum, the report states that these platforms are pioneers in the emerging tech that's highly resilient to cyber attacks while pointing out the scaling challenges that remain in order for them to challenge the likes of Visa. And the report said, Firstly, scalability of the main public blockchains remains limited due to the predetermined size of blocks and to the level of energy required to power the networks. The Bitcoin platform, for example, handles about 7 transactions per second on average and the public blockchain Ethereum twice as many, while Visa can process 2,000 per second with peaks of 56,000. With the World Trade Organization now backing cryptocurrencies and specifically Ripple, we can expect more financial institutions and other participants of international trade to join the Ripple network in facilitating seamless payments across borders. Now what I find really interesting here is while, while they were generally positive on these other tokens, on these other cryptocurrencies, they dwelt more on the challenges they still face. And with, with Ripple, the only challenge they are noticing, uh, noting here is that not a lot of activity has happened yet because obviously they are a new product. That leads me to believe that this report is very much more positive on Ripple and on XRP than it is on the other projects, specifically Bitcoin and Ethereum, where it primarily notes the difficulty of scaling and speed. Now, um, you have to keep in mind for both Bitcoin and Ethereum, there are solutions in the works and some already active that increase their scalability, that offer the potential for way more transactions, cheaper transactions, faster transactions to go through them. The thing with Ripple is Ripple out of the box, their XRP token has those higher capacities already. It doesn't need to be established on top of it. Let's continue to some Tron news. Um, I said earlier Tron up 10% again today. There would be some news coming out about it. Their virtual machine is out, meaning they now have smart contracts on their network. And smart contracts, um, for a lot of people, smart contracts are what is the difference between a first generation and second generation blockchain. And being a second generation blockchain, of course, means you are vastly technologically advanced over earlier blockchains such as Bitcoin. Let's read this as well. Less than two weeks ago and on the 28th of September, the team at Tron informed the community that the activation of the Tron virtual machine would be done on or before the 8th of October. The activation was hinged upon a consensus after voting on the platform. In a Twitter announcement just yesterday, Justin Sun informed the Tron community that the Tron virtual machine will be activated today, the 8th of October. He also added that the TVM will usher in a new era of smart contracts on the Tron network. His exact words are as followed. Uh, as follows. Based on the community consensus, Tron will be upgrading to Odyssey 3.1 at 8 p.m. The Tron committee function and TVM will go live, marking the start of the smart contract era. Tron will be 200 times faster versus Ethereum, 100 times cheaper versus EOS. Dapp developers and users, this one is for you. Now, I'm not sure how accurate these numbers are. I would like to see um, an independent study into it, but um, just having smart contracts on there. And um, no, no matter if these exact numbers are accurate, Tron is definitely fast and cheap among cryptocurrencies. So this is very, very good to hear. And Tron, of course, very good for dApp development because it's so fast and cheap. And now with smart contracts, that enables them a whole host of new stuff. And then they're just explaining what exactly this is. You can read the rest of the article, but I assume that you know what smart contracts are and why they're important here. Just wanted to let you guys know some positive Tron news, especially since um, yesterday I was relatively critical towards the Tron community. But I just want to point out again that I was not being critical of Tron as a project or of Justin Sun as its creator. I am very positive on Tron. I think there's a lot of potential there. I was critical of some parts of the Tron community who I believe don't quite understand a rational way forward for the ecosystem. Not of Tron itself, not of the entire community. Um, there are plenty of very, very intelligent and very reasonable people invested in Tron. I mean, I'm invested in him myself. So um, anyway, let's continue on. Good Money's master plan, a stealth bid to get celebs promoting crypto exposed. Now, of course, that is a great way to get more people to use cryptocurrencies, get celebrities or online celebrities to advertise them. We have seen that before with um, with some famous celebrities. They, they just had to mention crypto and it instantly made news. Like I, I think it was Katy Perry, the singer, who had her fingernails painted with um, Bitcoin symbols, made news. Uh, we had uh, Soldier Boy, the rapper, who hasn't even been relevant in a decade. 
Um, he mentioned Bitcoin in a song. It made news. I think Eminem also mentioned Bitcoin in a song. Also made news. So, of course, there is a lot of potential impact to be had with influential people talking about crypto. And some people are now trying to harness that in a systematic fashion. Let us read part of this, not the whole article, because it's very, very long, as you can see here. It's also very interesting, so do make sure to read it if, uh, if you find the uh, beginning of it interesting here. But let's, let's read. Can flat apps, gurus and mummy bloggers sell the masses on crypto? That seems to be the master plan behind a much hyped stealth startup by Gunnar Lovelace, the former co-founder of Thrive Market, who plans to redeploy a network of mega bloggers he built up promoting the health marketplace by turning its legion of fitness fans onto crypto. But if Lovelace is open to touting a network of celebrities that includes movie stars, life coaches, cookbook authors and YouTube frontman Bono in private, his company has been anything but public since its 2018 founding. Not only does its website contain virtually no information, but talk of the project has only so far seemed to circulate around secret parties strategically placed at major crypto events. Yet investor documents obtained by Coindesk reveal what good money is really banking on, the idea millennials trust internet personalities more than media or financial institutions. Thus the central idea is those personalities might be more than willing to monetize that trust. A pitch deck for the company obtained by Coindesk explains, Good Money is a millennial mobile first banking platform with a fiat crypto interoperability that empowers global citizens to be a part of a more equitable and transparent world. That, of course, is pure marketing speak. <laughs> Rumored to be planning a major initial coin offering since early 2018, Austin-based Good Money has raised 22 million on an offered 40 million in what appears to be a convertible note according to a September SEC filing. As for the product, it's effectively a mobile crypto wallet that will double as bank, payment system and investment platform. It also promises to let users decide which socially good causes to, dev to devote company profits to. Many of Good Money's promises will sound familiar to regular readers of initial coin offering white papers, fast, transa fast transactions, low fees, amazing user experience. But one aspect of Good Money does stand out, its focus on marketing. In a document outlining Good Money's token ecosystem, it describes a fundraising plan that ultimately aims to raise 80 million selling the security tokens or good shares tokenized equity in the company. The general public can look forward to a $15 million coin offering, though the token price is to be determined. The founders put in 10 million at a 40 million valuation or $0.0024 per token. The next tranches were slightly higher. The document breaks down a simple budget for the funds and marketing is the largest clearly defined line item with 15 to 30 million earmarked for marketing as opposed to 7 to 10 million for opening relationships with banks and 8 to 10 million devoted to tech. But if talk of the company has largely circulated around parties, the document suggests that isn't likely to stop. Good money festivals are one of the six legs of its larger marketing plan and one of five co-founders is a long time Burning Man staff member. So we're seeing here a completely different perspective and business plan. And I'm very excited to see how this will turn out. Um, that, now 25 to 40 million is a lot of money for marketing, but if they're going after say social media influencers, that might not take them that far. You have to keep in mind that um, the top social media influencers, like when you have like a Kardashian or some, someone famous, a pop star or an actor, getting them to make a social media post can cost a million already. So. Um, I'm interested in seeing who they will get for this, how they will try to push this. Um, they also seem to have a very um, strong focus on um, donating profits to, um, to good causes and letting your user base select which causes is always something good as well. So um, it's, it's very much shrouded in mystery, but there's more information that has come out in this article. I'm definitely very, very interested in this and it, it wasn't really on my radar before, but I'm definitely going to be following this now. And last but not least, another massive East Asian tech company is releasing a, pla a blockchain platform. They are releasing a testnet ahead of a launch in the first quarter of 2019. And this time it is Kakao. Kakao, of course, have a massive messaging platform in South Korea. And I believe they are popular in other parts of East Asia as well. Let's read this article and then I'm going to end the video for today. South Korea mobile messaging giant Kakao Corp unveiled the testnet version of its new blockchain platform Monday, October 8th ahead of a formal launch in quarter one of 2019, local media outlet Korea Herald reports. The platform, dubbed Clayton, I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to pronounce it, but that is how I'm pronouncing it, 
is the brainchild of Kakao subsidiary GroundX. Focused on decentralized apps, developers are currently working with around 10 domestic and international partners to experiment with the new ecosystem. A meetup to introduce Clayton will further run during the San Francisco Blockchain Week October 10, the Korea Herland reports. Herald? Herland? Herald. Yeah, Herald. They misspelled that here. <laughs> The popularization of blockchain requires providing a practical blockchain service for mass adoption, thereby validating the value and utility of blockchain technology, the Herald quotes GroundX CEO Jason Han as saying. To achieve this, GroundX has designed Clayton that can provide an easy and friendly environment for end users, service providers and developers all at the same time. The user environment has in fact removed many of the standard features of blockchain platforms such as wallets, addresses and private keys with developers also privileging transaction speed for its in-platform token, which they say will allow 1,500 transactions per second. Kakao has become increasingly active in the blockchain sphere with projects stemming from various sectors of the corporation and its subsidiaries. GroundX originally announced its plans in March, at the time denying it planned to use an initial coin offering to raise funds through token distribution and subsequently hinting it could instead use a private placement. Anyway, we don't have a lot of information about this, at least according to this article. There might be more information elsewhere. But we will probably find out more on the 10th of October when they will be introducing more information at their meetup. I'm sure there will be crypto reporters there that will write up articles after. In general, this is once again a large East Asian tech company getting more into blockchain, so this is very promising with their own token in this case. And um, let's see what how this will turn out. It seems they are very much going for accessibility here and removing wallets, addresses and private keys might be against the ideology of a lot of crypto purists. Um, for mainstream adoption, it might be a step in the right direction to make it a lot easier for people to get into it who aren't already in the crypto sphere. I'm excited to see what they will develop and um, this is where I'm going to end this video for now. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated and if you want to listen to me rant about my, my stupid crypto opinions. <laughs> All the articles are linked in the description as well as ways to support the channel with small crypto or PayPal donations. Anything is appreciated. Uh, my social media links, Facebook, Twitter page and an email address where you can ask questions for an upcoming question and answer video that um, someday I will make it. But I still need more questions. So make sure to send some good ones. And um, yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again soon.